Hey, what's up guys and girls? It's Jesse Daly. Welcome back to Daily Weather. Thank you so much for being here. My friends, we're going to take a very quick look again today at Tropical Storm Alvin, who is um, continuing to spin around uh, south of the Baja California Peninsula um, near Mexico. So as of 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time on Friday, May 30th, Alvin is packing winds of 50 miles per hour and moving to the northwest at around 10 miles per hour. Alvin is entering a, an area that is unfavorable for um, the continued development of the system. Um, that's good news, of course, for our friends who are living in this general area. Um, but again, the storm, the system is still expected to, you know, bring some impacts to the coastlines of Mexico uh, throughout the weekend. For example, I want to show you the public advisory here. We uh, can see that there are there's a large swell and rip currents are possible across portions of western mainland Mexico and southern Baja California um, through the weekend. So definitely something to you know, um, keep in mind, be, you know, be super careful. R rip currents are extremely dangerous. So make sure you're being really careful. Let's take a very quick look at the infrared satellite imagery of Tropical Storm Alvin, courtesy of tropicaltidbits.com. Um, this is a view of the cloud tops um, associated with Tropical Storm Alvin. The darker colors indicate very high cloud tops. Um, there is a chicken. <laughs> um, typically, uh, high cloud tops uh, are um, typically strong thunderstorms that have built up into the atmosphere. Um, so, we, we, and those are coming up as darker colors here. The lighter colors are lower level clouds. So the system is definitely not as well defined as it was yesterday. Again, it's entering an area of higher wind shear and drier air. So it is not doing so well. Um, but that's a current look at the storm. I also want to quickly show you what the National Hurricane Center believes is going to occur. Um, so this is the discussion in the National Hurricane Center. Uh, um, area here. Alvin will continue moving into an increasingly uh, hostile environment of strong wind shear, dry air, and sea surface temperatures that will drop below 26 degrees Celsius along Alvin's path in about 12 hours. These conditions will lead to Alvin losing its convection by Saturday, which is depicted by the GFS and um, European model simulated satellite imagery. There are no significant changes to the intensity forecast. Alvin is forecast to, to degenerate to a remnant low in about 24 hours and dissipate in about two days. So it's it's not to minimize this, my friends. You know, it's definitely important to um, keep in mind that anyone in this area should watch this very closely. But um, the good news is that it's not looking like this storm will intensify uh, too much more. So keep an eye on it if you're in this area. I also want to mention, my friends, that there is another area in the Eastern Pacific that we may uh, see some development um, uh, from pretty soon. Um, disturbance number one, uh, as of 11 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time on Friday, uh, an area of low pressure um, has been uh, an area has been highlighted, um, and the National Hurricane Center explains that an area of low pressure could form by the middle part of next week offshore the coasts of. Central America and Southern Mexico environmental conditions appear favorable for some development of the system while it moves generally west to west and northwest. We'll definitely keep an eye on that one. Um, again, my friends, I'm in the Caribbean, so we have chickens. That's what you're hearing. Speaking of the Caribbean, I'm going to jump over to the Atlantic and Caribbean map here. Still no um, tropical cyclonic development um, being flagged in the next seven days as of Friday, May 30th. However, I do want to point out one final uh, point here. In my video yesterday, it's linked up uh, above, I, I showed you a, um, a run of the global forecast system um, courtesy of tropicaltidbits.com. And I'm going to show you this again because, you know, the, the, the closer that you get to, um, that you get to the days that the global forecast system um, and the computer forecast models in general, um, the closer that you get into the future uh, of 
what they're predicting, the higher likelihood of something you know materializing that falls in line with what the computer is predicting. Yesterday, there was a potential um, you know area by Florida uh, that could develop into something, and it's showing that again um, to, on today's run. So I just want to quickly um, to, to just walk you through this here. Um, this is um, just looking ahead into June third. Moving, still not too much happening. High pressure dominating the Caribbean, although we are seeing that potential system develop uh, off the south coast of Mexico. But if we move this forward, keep an eye on the Western Caribbean here, and we do see something spin up uh, around the 8th of June and then move uh, across the looks like Hispaniola, um, and then possibly up toward Florida around June 10th. Now, of course, this is very far out, but this is the second day that the global forecast system is um, is showing this. So that catches you know my eye, and it should catch everyone's attention when there's more agreement um, with the model runs, then it's definitely something to uh, pay close attention to. So um, we'll keep a, an eye on it, um, and that is looks like right now the only thing um, in the uh, Caribbean Atlantic area that the GFS is flagging but that can change so again follow the National Hurricane Center hurricane season starts on June 1st that is literally this Sunday um, it starts in the Atlantic on June 1st the Eastern Pacific hurricane season started on May 15th so my friends be safe out there follow the National Hurricane Center and hit subscribe if you enjoyed this video I really appreciate you watching it and as always I will keep an eye on the tropical skies come rain or shine